Coming up on First at Four, one university student is receiving help after losing everything in the flooding. And an attempted break-in at an FBI visitor screening center in Ohio leads to a standoff. Plus, some gorgeous late summer weather is on the way as we head into the weekend. A full breakdown next is First at Four. Continue. Mountain News, first at four, continues. Well, a lot of students are getting ready to return to school for this school year. EKU students started move in on Wednesday in Richmond, but students like Candace Jenkins, who were impacted by the Eastern Kentucky floods, were allowed to move in earlier. Chelsea Jones has her story. EKU student Candace Jenkins lost her home in the flood. And that was super, super hard because I didn't have anywhere to live for like four days. She remembers waking up to water inside her bedroom. And mom's like, we got to get out of here because like the power's still on. We could get electrocuted. After staying in a hotel, she's now back on campus. Well, EKU students started moving in on Wednesday, but students like Candace who were impacted by the floods were allowed to move in earlier. We need to make sure that the students that come to us from these areas are are taken care of. EKU Dean of Students Dr. Laura Vance says the university has about 700 students from impacted counties. About 100 were directly impacted by the flooding. The university is providing financial assistance to 20 students who've lost everything. Candace says without EKU's safe emergency fund, she wouldn't be here. I got the the funds in my account like three days later. She used the money to buy food, school supplies, and clothes. I went to TJ Maxx and got like all kinds of stripes because I'm really big on stripes. A high achiever, Candace is on a full scholarship, a sophomore studying engineering, and the first in her family to go to college. If that wasn't enough, she's also in the National Guard. Candace is heartbroken by the devastation in her Letcher County hometown, but her puppy Chewy and her parents are keeping her spirits up and her EKU family is helping too. And I know if I need something that I can go to them. So I'm very thankful for that. In Madison County, Chelsea Jones, WKYT. EKU is asking for donations to support other students like Candace Jenkins. You can find out how to help by visiting this story on our website. The recent flood tore through all of the Appalachian Artisan Center studios in Hindman in Knott County, destroying a lot of artwork and designs in its path. Water reached almost six feet in each of the, uh, each of the parts of the building, uh, covering instruments and artwork with mud. Director of Development and Fundraising Teresa Thomas says walking into their studios after the flood was just heartbreaking. Coming in here, we had about a half a foot of nothing but mud and debris. No windows. The store was completely taken off the hinges and the wall. As you can still see, the broken glass. Thomas says they have lost at least one and a half million dollars worth of property from the flood. And we'll have more on that later tonight. <laughs> A beautiful day continues here in the mountains. Thank goodness we are easing into a little bit of a more uh, tranquil pattern as we head not just into the weekend, but really as we head through much of the next week or so. We'll get into that in just a second, but for now, beautiful outside. Plenty of blue sky around the region. Just a few fair weather clouds bubbling up in the quote unquote heat of the afternoon. UVA wise is only at 72 right now. That is comfortable. Downtown Whitesburg, blue sky there as well. We said it's 78, that dew point of 60, so you'll feel the humidity, but it's not crazy out there. Temperatures, upper 70s to near 80 out there, so more than, imp more than nice as we head through the evening hours. Thanks to those winds out of the north, for the most part light, but a few of us getting in on the uh, gusts to uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Clean sweep on pinpoint Doppler, and you got to go up into Wisconsin and Illinois to run into any rain, and I think it's going to be a while before we see any more as well. Full details on when we could see a couple of showers. Try to sneak back in here in just a little bit. So keep that WYMT weather app handy in the meantime for a preview of that forecast. Steve? 
Evan, thank you. Republican House members gathered today to speak about the search carried out at former President Trump's Palm Beach home. The members of Congress said they believe the DOJ and FBI are being weaponized and used by the Biden administration to attack Trump ahead of the upcoming midterm election season. They also said the DOJ should share its findings with the House Intelligence Committee so members are aware of why the department thought a search warrant of Mar-a-Lago was necessary. Trump also said on social media that he wants the documents released immediately, although his lawyers who have copies of the search warrant and property receipt could release those documents themselves with Trump's consent. Uh, we have serious questions concerning the actions taken uh, by Director Ray and ordered by General Gar excuse me, Attorney General Garland <clears throat> to raid Marlargo and the personal residence of Donald Trump. Um, the um, all both of them uh, are subject to oversight <clears throat> by Congress, and it is our job to ensure that they not are not abusing their discretion or politicizing uh, the powers that we have given them. During his remarks yesterday, Attorney General Merrick Garland said he could not comment on what FBI agents were searching for specifically, but said the decision to sign off on the search warrant was not one he took lightly. Meanwhile, the DOJ filed a motion Thursday to unseal the search warrant, a rare move for an ongoing investigation. The search of the former president's Florida home has angered many of his supporters, including a man who tried to force his way into an FBI field office in Cincinnati yesterday. Police say the man was armed, and after a car chase, he was shot and killed. CBS's Katherine Herridge has more. The situation began around 9 a.m. Thursday when the suspect, wearing body armor and carrying a nail gun and long gun, tried to breach the FBI's visitor screening center in Cincinnati. Sources tell CBS News the suspect is Ricky Schiffer. The FBI says agents confronted the suspect before he fled, leading to a car chase. The pursuit came to an end and he stopped his vehicle. Uh, when he got out, that's when uh, shots were exchanged between officers and the suspect. After an hours-long standoff, law enforcement officials say they shot and killed the suspect. Situations like today are unfortunate. They're unfortunate for a community. They're unfortunate for those involved in it. After the FBI searched Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home Monday, posts believed to be from the suspect encouraged people to go to Palm Beach, where Trump's estate is located, and kill federal agents if they get in the way. Additional posts that appear to be from the same man claim he was at then-President Trump's January 6th speech on the ellipse. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. And later at the Capitol, as the riots unfolded. Thursday morning, a user with the same name as the suspect posted, if you don't hear from me, it is true. I tried attacking the FBI. Earlier this week, FBI Director Christopher Wray condemned calls for violence against bureau agents. Any threats made against law enforcement, including the men and women of the FBI, are deplorable and dangerous. Catherine here at CBS News, Washington. And stay right there. We'll be right back with Money Watch. WYM